Here at Unsolved Mysteries, we profile a number of people who've experienced remarkable recoveries from serious illness. In most cases, these turnarounds are attributed to the power of the human spirit or to the power of faith. But the woman you're about to meet believes she is alive today because of something far more incredible, a miracle that came from outer space. This is Lynn Plaskett of New Smyrna Beach, Florida. A former county councilwoman, Lynn is one of the most respected members of her community. In 1981, Lynn saw a television program about UFOs, which featured a clip from the Mike Douglas show. During the broadcast, she heard the sound of what was said to be an alien spacecraft. For Lynn, it triggered a deep subconscious memory. What was, what did when this sound came across the TV, I sat straight up in my seat. Chills came over my whole body. And I said, oh my God, oh my God. That's the same sound that I heard that night in my room. And that's when I knew for sure that that experience had actually happened to me. By all accounts, Lynn Plaskett should have died in 1975. She was 24 years old, recently separated from her husband, and raising a three-year-old son on her own. Then a routine physical threw Lynn's life into turmoil. They said that there's carcinoma uh, in your uterus. We want to prepare you for a possible hysterectomy, mentally, physically, and of the like. So even though I didn't want any more children at that time, when they tell you that they're, they may take everything that you have, you start having second thoughts. Okay. Okay. During a pre-surgical exam, Lynn's doctor made another disturbing discovery. Tomorrow we'll go ahead with the cone biopsy. And then, depending on what that shows, we might need to do the hysterectomy. Okay. Hmm. How long have you had this? What? This little lump here. I don't know. Lynn's doctor decided to take a biopsy of the growth at the same time he performed the uterine biopsy. That as well. Um, Just take a look under the microscope. Upon uh, coming out of the surgery, the doctors came to me and said, "Well, we have some good news and some bad news." The good news is, is that we didn't have to perform the hysterectomy. And I'm thinking, that's great. And I said, so what's the bad news? The lymph node in your neck did turn out to be what's known as a T-cell lymphoma. A T-cell lymphoma is an extremely rare form of cancer. Lynn says she was told there were only three known cases on record in the United States. All three were newborns who died within a year of diagnosis. And that's also involved with, with the disease. The doctor told me that in their opinion at that time, that I had three months to live. This had infiltrated my lungs, my uh, liver. It was basically, my understanding at that time, it was pretty much engulfed my entire body, except for my stomach and my brain, and they weren't too sure about those, those two places. That afternoon, Lynn's doctor allowed her to leave the hospital, provided she returned the next morning. When Lynn got home, the house was empty. Her sister had taken her son out for the day. <laughs> and that is when it all came and hit me. I started crying for my three-year-old son. And I thought, you know, he is too young. The only thing he will remember is that I left him. In the midst of her anguish, Lynn says she experienced an episode that was nothing short of phenomenal. I heard what sounded like an electrical or a buzzing type sound. And then the room started filling up with a fog-like smoke. Lynn says she suddenly found herself being lifted from the bed, levitated into thin air. It was not a frightening experience, even though I didn't understand you know, what was happening to me. It was very pleasant. Next, Lynn says a truly extraordinary occurred. A small disc-shaped object, about eight inches in diameter, came in through the open window. It had a raised portion on the top and multicolored lights. And it went from my head, passed down, to my feet, 
and never actually touched me. However, I felt as if, for some reason, it was almost examining me. And as far as I can remember, I just rolled over and went to sleep. I never got up. I never thought, oh my God, what was that? I just automatically just felt so relaxed that I just rolled over and went to sleep. When I woke up the next morning, I was like revived. I just knew that I was going to be all right. The nurse is starting the very first of your chemotherapy drugs. That same morning, then began a rigorous chemotherapy program. It was a last desperate attempt to prolong her life, if only for a few months. My doctor told me, even if I took the experimental drugs, that I would never see my 26th birthday, that some of the effects from these drugs would make my bones so brittle that I would be an old woman and a young woman's body. But remarkably, just four days after Lynn's first treatment, she says her doctor discovered that a malignant tumor in her chest had drastically shrunk in size. Four months later, Lynn was in total remission. For all intents and purposes, she was cancer-free and has been ever since. It may seem unbelievable, but Lynn has no doubt that she was cured by a visitor from beyond the stars. The way they explained it to me was that, you know, this is medical journal type of healing cure. I mean, it's just, it was phenomenal to them. And my doctor explained to me that, in his opinion, 99% of my cure was my mental attitude towards the disease. That's, what else could they say? Lynn's original physician declined to be interviewed for this segment. We asked cancer specialist Dr. Rex Green to offer his opinion on Lynn's dramatic recovery. Whatever she experienced, I don't second guess or judge what my patients tell me. Um, it's whatever she experienced. I can't comment on it. But I certainly find chemotherapy a better explanation for what happened. I know what happened to me. I'm alive today. I'm living proof that this occurred to me. And I'm just happy to be able to share this with other people. If you believe in something, no proof is necessary. And if you don't, no proof is sufficient. I believe that without that experience, I would not be here at all. Even taking chemotherapy, without that experience, I would not be here sitting talking to you now.